Uh, right. Good morning and hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's uh, Trend Signal Trading Podcast. Uh, my name is Adrian Boothy. I'm the head of trading here at Trend Signal. And as ever, I'm joined by our chief market analyst, Jerry Miller. Hi, Jerry. Yeah. Hi there, uh, everyone. Hi. Uh, morning, Adrian. Uh, good. So it is the 16th of October 2023, and we're going to be talking about what's been happening over the last week, what's happening for the week ahead uh, on the financial market. So for currencies, indices, commodities, stocks. Um, and obviously, there's a huge story at the moment with regards to uh, the war in Gaza uh, that's happening uh, right now. It's having a big, big impact on the markets, but also uh, infl inflation data um, as well, which is continuing to um impact uh, the markets as well so jerry uh, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, a rundown of what's been going on over the last week what do we know uh, about the markets uh, in place right now well uh, as traders the big uh, dose of uncertainty is the israel uh, hamas war in gaza which has introduced even more global uncertainty and we, we call this you know a global macro event that uh, is affecting you know markets globally really um, uh, just to put everyone in the picture the um, Hamas the terrorist organization in Gaza um, basically attacked Israel over the weekend of the 7th and the 8th and they slaughtered and butchered well it turns out you know 1400 Israeli citizens and that's really provoked an all-out war between Hamas um, and that's not the Gazans uh, that's Hamas in Gaza uh, and Israel uh, and the logic, of the logic for the attack is not really obvious at the moment, although my suspicions are they just want to start a, a bigger regional war, but it's come at a significant cost to ordinary uh, Gazans living in the Gaza Strip. Anyway, the effect is significant, but at the beginning of last week, it was not obvious. You know, crude jumped, what, $3 or whatever, but just sort of traded sideways, Adrian. And I, I sort of looked at it and thought, well, if there is a war, and it is going to escalate, and that's what everyone's worried about. What I mean by escalating, so if you look at the, you know, the gap up at the beginning of last week, it then sort of traded lower, filled the gap, and then wow, just took off uh, on uh, Friday. And I think part of the reason is is because we were concerned about the escalation uh, that this uh, that 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 could happen with Hezbollah based in southern Lebanon, which is on the northern borders of Israel. Um, uh, and Hezbollah are a lot bigger than Hamas and they're supported by Iran and that sort of starts to bring in other countries as well uh, and it really just increases the uncertainty for us as traders. So hence the big um, move up on Friday of oil on the 13th of October. We also saw a significant move in gold as well. Um, massive move actually up on uh, Friday. Um, Jerry, just to, just to go through, that's the same, same reasoning, uh, is it there? Well, it is and it isn't. So oil went up on the back of the uncertainty over um, supplies and the flow of oil out of uh, the Middle East. Um, if there's going to be an escalating war that starts to spread to other regions, that could impact the uh, production and supply of oil to the West. Now, that's fine when when that happens. I mean, oil could go a lot higher than where we are at the moment, of course, but it, it, it depends whether this war escalates. Gold, gold is is really what's called um, sort of a lightning rod for uh, global macro events or global macro angst, if I could call it that, where um, the uncertainty, uncertainty created by the war in uh, the Middle East uh, between uh, um, Hamas and Israel has resulted in a big spike in gold. Uh, and it, that's the way it tends to happen. And think about it. It was on a day when the dollar will continue to rally as well on the foreign exchange markets, which would normally depress gold. So to see gold up, gosh, what was it? hundred bucks on the day, Friday, I think it was something like that. Um, yeah. That's a big move. Uh, in fact, their biggest weekly move since um, mid-March during the, uh, if you remember that mini banking crisis in the US. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, it's a huge, I mean, you've got to look back at the chart over the last you know, few months and you just don't really see candlesticks of that magnitude, do you? So that's a rally from 1868 up to sort of you know, 1932. So it's about a 60-70 uh, dollar move so it is it's significant three yeah, percent yeah. more than three percent actually yeah well on, on the week gold was up uh, five and a half percent and you 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 know you if you actually 
stretch the chart back to sort of mid-March, you'll see a candle of that sort of proportion. But it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's impressive impressive in in light of the fact that the the, the dollar was um, on the rally as well i think the day that it happened was um in march was the 17th of march Adrian? yeah i've just got my cursor on it now so uh yeah big move and around uh sort of actually a bit less i would say but but either way big certainly big move 60 70 dollars again so yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. um okay so, so flight to quality is that what we're we're sort of looking at there jerry <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So when we refer to flight to quality, uh, this is uh, in times of sort of uncertainty and global angst, investors go into safer assets and the safer assets are the US dollar is one, um, uh, global bonds, sovereign bonds. When I talk about those, I'm talking about uh, European bonds, German bonds, uh, UK gilt. But most importantly, U.S. Treasury is one of the biggest, the biggest bond market in the world that's held by um, e virtually every investor globally. Um, we saw a, a jump uh, in those bond markets, a, a fall in yields that reversed a trend that had seen yields um, hitting multi-month highs previously. And what makes them safer so than, than, say, the stock market, for example? OK, so the stock market is very uncertain to the extent that you don't know how companies are going to perform in the future, uh, the effects of inflation and a war and the jump in oil price and all sorts of things. Whereas bonds, they give a fixed return. Yeah, No matter what is going to happen, sovereign bonds, especially AAA rated bonds, they are, they are guaranteed to give you the return that they uh, say they're going to give you. Um, guaranteed by the governments as well, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so, so they, they pay what's called a coupon or an interest rate, uh, and that is set in stone, it can't be changed. Uh, when you buy the bond, that is. Um, and uh, gold, well, I'm, I'm not a monster fan of gold, as you know, Adrian, but uh, gold yeah. is, um, it, it, it won't rot, rot, rust, it won't rot, it won't disappear. Um, it's always there. It does cost to be stored, it does cost to be insured, and it doesn't pay any dividend or anything, but it's there and it will remain, that value will remain in times of strife and war uh, and that's why it tends to do well when there's a sudden bout of global uh, angst and a big global macro event that we saw in uh, Gaza Strip. Okay so on that basis then so if, if things escalate then all other things being equal you'd expect a sort of a continuance of some of the moves that we saw on Thursday Friday last week but if things start to subside a little bit and and so on you'd expect it's probably more likely to see more of a rally in equities and probably pull back on gold yeah. and the that sort of thing. Um, I mean, normally it's sort of the surprise and sudden realization that something horrible and is going to happen if it does escalate. And that's why those sort of markets, especially gold, will react to it. If the if the war does escalate, but slowly, and there's a question mark over whether it will actually be reined in by diplomacy, then gold won't do so well. It's only when it gets out of hand that gold does particularly well. And of course, Crude oil is more down to the fundamentals of supply and demand. And if uh, the war in um, Gaza results in uh, difficulty shipping oil from the Middle East to the West, then, uh, you know, that'll push up prices. Um, that's excellent. Thank you, uh, Jerry. So let's have a quick look at some of the announcements last week. I think the main one that we, there's two big ones really last week that we uh, flagged ahead of time in our um in our podcast on Monday of last week. Number one, uh, the FOMC meeting minutes. Uh, and then we had the inflationary data, uh, inflation data on the Thursday in the US. So do you want to tell us a bit about those as well, Jerry, and how they had an impact on things? Yeah, those are really two very important announcements, um, the minutes and the inflation data, because they inform us as to what the Federal Reserve, that's the central bank in the US, are going to be doing with interest rates up until a year end and beyond. Um, so the, the, the US inflation data that you were just um, uh, hovering over there on Thursday was actually preceded by the FOMC minutes. So that's the Federal Open Market Committee, a bit like our Monetary Policy Committee here in the UK. They set monetary policy. So they're the ones that decide on whether there's going to be an interest rate hike or even an interest rate cut. Uh, anyway, they publish their minutes. Rather curiously, three weeks after the event, and I never know why, uh, for example, here in the UK, the MPC 
publishes their minutes the day of their decision. It's like, well, you've taken the minutes. What, what, what do you need to do for the next three weeks, uh, FMC? Well, what happens then? I don't know why they do it that way, but they do. Anyway, the committee members, as we know, decided not to raise rates when they had that uh, meeting three and a half weeks ago. Um, but the minutes suggested most members sort of implied another interest rate might be appropriate. And there's a lot of maybes might suggested, implied, uh, but whatever they're saying, they think there's a chance of an interest rate rise, which is at odds with the forward rate markets, which imply that there's not going to be an interest rate rise, and there's sort of a there's a there's a sort of 30% chance of a of a rate rise, and it it'll, it'll ebb and flow from day to day. Um, can we, so can we, can we talk about that then? So we we've had this in the past where you know, earlier this year there was a, you know the very much um, the, the central bank talking about having lots more rate uh, rises, and then the markets weren't really factoring those in, sort of bit sort of head in the sand type of thing. Um, who tends to be right on these things? Um, is, is it the case well, that the that the the market is tend to be a little bit more uh, hopeful <laughs> that you won't have uh, rate rises, but mm. um, perhaps a little bit unrealistic? Well, if 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 you think about it, the forward rate markets are a constant. Uh, marker on where interest rates could go. So it's like getting a permanent commentary from the Federal Reserve on what they're thinking. But of course, they don't do that. So in a way, what I'm saying is they're both right in a way, because the forward rate agreements in that FedWatch tool, Adrian, are telling us at any time what participants are thinking rates will do uh, 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 over a given period. Whereas the Federal Reserve, they only update us sort of once every month, every six weeks. We get official data that comes out from these various agencies. But the people who are making the decisions are not so forthcoming with their views. The minutes, yes, that's one way of doing it. And Jay Powell, the chair of the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve is speaking this week as well. That's another way of communicating. But we, we, we tend to rely on the forward rate market to tell us what the market is thinking. But actually, sometimes it's at odds with what the Fed are thinking or what they're saying. Like, but we had one Fed member from the Atlanta Fed who said that um, interest rates um, do not need to be uh, increased further. And he said he was this chap, uh, Raphael Bostic, who's the Atlanta Fed president. Um, so he said one thing. Others might say, well, it's just still a possibility. So I think the thing is, don't be hooked. Don't be hooked into believing that what is said on Monday, the 16th of uh, October, is gospel going forward, because that gospel is being written, writ rewritten every day. Uh, yeah. Well, fair enough. Thank you. Um, so we, well, let's let's think about the interest rates. So, so there's had been much of a change. I mean, we've got the next meeting on the 1st of November. Uh, that's still pretty much a, what seems like a shoe in really for uh, a no change uh, in the interest rates. Um, it's changed perhaps a little bit over the last week, but not too much really. Um, but it's definitely got slightly uh, more likely to have uh, a rate rise for the December meeting, hasn't it, Jerry? It shifted by 7%, something like that. But, you know, if you're a betting man, someone told you that there's a 33% chance of a, a hike in rates. Well, I don't think you put your money on that if there was a, no. which meant there was a 67% chance, 67% chance that the that, that rates wouldn't go up. So, you know, that's that's really what participants are telling us. That's where they're positioned. Um, so for now, I would suggest that there won't be an interest rate rise and that the Fed uh, FMC committee members will come in line with that, perhaps. Um, certainly some of them have already said, like this chap, Raphael Bostic from the Atlanta Fed, that um, they don't think rates should go up any further. Well, I mean, either way, whatever happens, you know, it's these announcements, these statements that come through, they do cause uh, effects. They do cause ripples in the market. It creates movement. And that's really what us as traders are interested in, because we don't have to be an economist to understand all of this sort of stuff necessarily. We just need to know when announcements are being made. And that's where, you know, excellent economic calendars like 
uh, the Forex Factory calendar can really help us because they tell us uh, where the little banana skins might be. We can plan accordingly. So in many work um, uh, podcasts, I've talked about how swing traders, you know, we really need to be aware of specifically uh, or most specifically interest rate announcements and non-farm employment change. Um, and then as intraday traders, it is items like the red items that we just need to be mindful of. So if you're trading, say, a, you know, a dollar currency pair or the US index at 130 on uh, the 12th of October last week, then you probably want to be flat. And then as the announcement comes out, then suddenly it's a bit like a big rock being thrown into a pond. Waves, ripples are taking place. That is movement uh, on your charts uh, that creates opportunity for us. That's what's more interesting uh, for us to trade. So it's all about knowing where those rocks, when, sorry, those little boulders and rocks might be thrown into our pond uh, so we can trade uh, those waves. Um, so that's last week, uh, Jerry. What about this coming week? What do we need to be aware of? Well, it, it, it's interesting when, you know, we did our workshop this morning at eight o'clock and, you know, going through it all and discussing this with uh, our participants, it was it was clear that we can't give, you know, there's, there, there's nothing certain this week with the conflict in the Middle East. That is, seems to be the overriding event at the moment. This is what happens there if, if, if you know, uh, the, the war does escalate and if Israel take action that is deemed to be like, where's this going? Um, and I think there's a lot of diplomacy taking place at the moment. Notwithstanding the uncertainty that the war creates, the data that I'm looking at, um, we've got um, uh, CPI data coming out from the UK, which is absolutely key for us here in the UK. Uh, and we've got manufacturing data coming out from uh, the US uh, Monday and Thursday. Uh, and we've also got um, unemployment data here in the UK. So it's not a big week. There are no major interest rate decisions. Uh, but this is all part of the ebb and flow of information that the market needs to decide whether interest rates might be going up. And obviously, uh, central bankers who also need this information to inform them of what decisions they need to take. So a few things definitely for day traders to be aware of then. But in, let, let, let's just quickly, before I guess we finish, um, think about the, the war and the conflict um, in uh, in Gaza. So how should traders treat this? Because if that's the overarching sort of concern at the moment is, you know, things could escalate, it could escalate quickly. How should traders be positioning themselves for that? Is it a case of being aware that the market's going to be a bit more jittery? Perhaps they should be looking to take profits where they can. Should they be reducing their trade size or risk? But I think um, both of those, yeah. I think both of those, you've just hit the nail on the head. With increased uncertainty, the risk goes up. And the only way we can control our risk is then reducing the amount that we're trading, trading per point. And that's 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 by far and away the best way to do it. Sure, if you've got positions uh, and uh, they've uh, they're making a, a, a pretty good profit, if you know, like we were given this 24-hour um, sort of window for or we, the the markets were told about this 24-hour window that northern Gazans were given to leave the north, the Gaza city, and go to the south of the Gaza Strip, which is 1.1 million people. It was all a bit nonsensical, really. Nothing has happened, though. And the problem with all these deadlines is that the more they don't happen, the more the market won't believe them. But I just think, I think probably the best thing to do, Adrian, is definitely reduce trade size for now. Um, yeah. That's just sensible. It's like, it's like you're sailing a dinghy in the in the English Channel and the wind's really really picked up you're going to keep the same amount of sail up or you're going to reduce the amount of sail to make your journey a little bit safer and that's really what we're talking about here when the seas get choppier just be careful because you don't want to be blown completely off course or more to yeah. point sunk exactly and an, an announcement can come out sort of at any point really and I think one thing I often say is, you know, we, we, we all work very hard to accumulate the capital that goes into our broker account. And so we don't want to be really risking it so frivolously or gambling it away. You know, it's um, it's hard. It's hard gained. And I think it's important that we look to protect it, uh, really. Yeah. So particularly, you know, when, uh, as I say, the water is a little stormier. So, um, yeah, everybody be, be, be aware of the risk. If that means reducing trade size a little bit, 
don't be afraid to do that you know and then as the markets then normalize of course your risk control and your trading can perhaps normalize there as well but you know it's really a question of moving through um this sort of um, phase of the market but what's interesting about it is you know it is it is news like this it is information like this that stimulates movement in the market and that does regardless of risk it does create opportunities uh, for us as traders so um it, 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 it makes it makes it a more interesting interesting time that sounds a horribly unsympathetic uh, way of phrasing that but um it does it does it does make for opportunity let's put it that way um good uh, okay joey thank you uh for that um that's uh, that's excellent um we'll call it an end to uh today's podcast there uh, we'll be back on the 23rd of october for next week's podcast and we'll give a review and, and again uh, of what's happened uh, in the week uh, in between and then what we should be may, being aware of uh, for the following week as well so uh, as ever uh, have wonderful weeks trading everybody hopefully you'll be making lots and lots of profits uh, and we'll catch up then bye for now